What's going on, Chicharon? What's up, guys? This is your Pinoy boy, Mikey Bustos, and this is my Draw My Life video. Been getting a lot of requests to do one, so here we go. My name is Mikey Bustos, born Michael John Yadan to Manil Pestano Bustos. Those are the last names of all four of my grandparents, plus a second name, because I am a Filipino. Anyway, I was born on June 23, 1981, to two Filipino parents who immigrated to Canada in the 70s. Now, I remember growing up in Project Housing in a really rough area in Toronto known as Jane and Finch, though it was notorious for being quite ghetto. My family made it a loving home and I rather enjoyed playing with my younger brother and the other black kids, Spanish kids, Indian kids, and Europeans, and so on. Now, my parents were very hard workers. My mother worked at a hospital in the emergency ward, surprise, surprise, and my father worked as an aircraft mechanic, and though we weren't quote-unquote rich, we did live happily. Now my parents were such hard workers that they were able to save up a little bit of money. And with that money, we moved into our very first bungalow, no longer project housing. And the neighborhood was nice, but it was an awesome place for my brother and I to grow up for the first few years of our life. What was interesting too was that we had a lot of relatives migrate to Canada and they stayed with us for a while, so that was kind of neat. We were never alone and had lots of company. Now as a child, your Pinoy boy was not so much a good boy. As a kid I was a big rascal actually and I pulled kids hair, I threw stones at my brother's fingers. I was what Filipinos call kulit, but on steroids. But come on, I wasn't all that bad. I also put a lot of my energy into good and positive things like drawing. I also like to write stories and write music. Of course, I enjoyed singing and enjoyed dancing. But I also loved bugs, especially ants. Now, in elementary school up until grade 3, I was an okay student. Not excelling at all, but enjoying recess and talking about the Ninja Turtles. Of course, Michelangelo was my favorite. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in a Half Shell, Turtle Power. Yeah, so that's what I was into. Now my dad was starting to make some serious dough. Saving up, being promoted, over and over again. So with that cash, my family moved into an even bigger house in 1989. In a very beautiful, mostly wealthy Italian neighborhood which I consider the home we all grew up in. My family in Toronto still lives in that house today after 24 wonderful long years. Moving to the new neighborhood, I transferred schools. And it was in this school where I made new friends, mostly Italian, took Italian class, and suddenly found myself on top of my class, surprisingly. I was suddenly the nerd of the group, getting straight A's, being part of student council and writing the school cheer which I believe they still sing today. I don't know if it was the teachers or if it was my change in breakfast but for some reason for the next five or six years or so I was going to be on top of my class smart and all that and I graduated with honors academic excellence award the science award the art award the music award and I even got honorable mention for excelling in Italian class. And I also delivered the graduate's address during our prom. Now with my apparent brains and potential, my mom insisted that I go to a private school all the way downtown in Toronto, an hour away from where we lived, to one of Ontario's most elite all-boys priest-run hockey school called St. Michael's College for the rich kids. Now... <laughs> I love it and I appreciate that my mom took three jobs in order to pay for it. You know, she was determined to raise a veterinarian doctor or something. At least that was her plan. But the truth is, for five years, I hated high school. I was depressed for five years, made honor roll only four of those years, and still struggled feeling like I didn't fit in. You know, I do remember around adolescence feeling different, like I was unpopular or inferior. I didn't have good enough grades to fit in with the nerds, and I certainly couldn't play sports to save my life, so I couldn't relate to the jocks, 
and I didn't play hockey, of course, because, well, I'm Filipino. <laughs> the girls, well, they didn't really like me either. I was just kind of an awkward kid. And you know what? I blamed it on me being different, on me being Filipino. Strange, I know, but as a teenager, I didn't know better. Anyway, to escape, I rushed home after school every day to play with my various animal pets like tarantulas and sugar gliders and to sing with my new singing group that I eventually joined. In high school, inspired by the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, I began to get serious about wanting to sing. As a big form of escapism from my teenage years in high school, I joined four other Filipino kids to form a boy band called Heaven Sent and we later became known as True Legacy. We performed a lot, mostly Filipino festivals and anywhere we could. Soon I got real into songwriting and got so serious about wanting to be a performer that I would pray every day at lunch at school to be famous one day and to get out of this damn high school where I felt so inferior. Anyway, around this time, I also found my very first love, a Pinay named Gia. She was beautiful. Man, I was in love. I was so in love. I was in love with being in love. We were gonna be together forever. I bought her a ring. We were supposed to get married. We were gonna have kids. Well, at least that was the plan. But then, two years later, I moved an hour away outside of Toronto to attend school at University of Guelph. And, well... The girls seemed to find me cute. <laughs> it's kind of weird, actually. And I was suddenly the popular kid on residence. Mostly because I was the Asian kid from the city. Considered exotic. And, well, they asked me what my name was. And it was then that I decided to rename myself Mikey. The popular Filipino party kid on residence. For the very first time in my life... I enjoyed being different. I enjoyed my Filipino heritage. Anyway, in school, instead of studying, I decided to sing. I began studying the vocals of Mariah Carey, Wanye from Boys to Men, Brian Littrell from BSB, JC Chazes from NSYNC, Usher Raymond, and Christina Aguilera, and I developed my own vocal style. One day, I was urged to join a university-wide singing competition, and I came first. Then I went on to represent my university as the champion of my university against 10 other university champions. When I won that competition that night in front of thousands of people cheering for me, I suddenly knew that my calling was to sing, or at least to perform. My desire and my conviction to perform was so strong that I allowed myself to fail first year university and I broke my mom's heart when she found out I would no longer be going back to school and that I wanted to be a singer, and that I no longer wanted to be a vet. And based on my track record of doing well in school, and then sometimes doing bad, and then sometimes doing well again, I came to the conclusion that being educated and being intelligent were not the same thing. My mom told me to get my head out of the clouds, that I didn't have connections, I didn't have, you know, the money, and she even told me I didn't have the talent to make it in showbiz. It broke my heart. Easily, I became the black sheep of the family, the university dropout. But I told everybody, and I told my mom, You wait, mommy. One day, I'm gonna be a somebody. Now, secretly on the side, my father was very supportive of my bold dreams. He told me, I believe in you, son. The reason behind this is because my dad also had very bold dreams as a kid. He grew up wanting to be a famous basketball player in the Philippines. And well, it didn't really turn out that way, but he still understood the passion, and he saw it, and he supported me. And so determined, I spent a year trying to perform and get discovered. I got a job in the meantime as a telemarketer, and kind of met a new crowd, who helped me kind of party a lot. And together we kind of did a lot of things that young people do that get young people into trouble. I began sneaking out to party, coming home at wee hours of the night. My mom would yell at me, Michael, you are a waste. What are you doing with your life? And I would yell back, you wait, I'm going to be a somebody, mommy, just watch. But I knew I was spiraling downhill. 
In my crazed out social life, breaking girls' hearts, getting my heart broken, partying until I had no voice left, spending all sorts of money until I was broke, and I always had to borrow money from my dad, I hated asking him to. Big blow to my manhood and pride, I knew I was reaching an all-time low in my early 20s. But then, a ray of light. I saw a special on the life of Christina Aguilera, and it inspired me to fix my life. And soon, I managed to score a great job at the Bank of Montreal downtown. I wore suit and tie, pay was good, I stopped partying, cold turkey, and I worked on getting my voice back. Then a friend said, Hey Mikey, why don't you try out for this nationwide singing reality show? And I said, Okay, but turns out I didn't make it past the first cut. The show was called Pop Stars. It wasn't such a good show anyway. Bah. Then Canadian Idol Season 1 hit Canada. In short, I quit my job at the bank to audition and I made it past the first cut. Then the second cut, past the third cut to the top 143, past the fourth cut, past the fifth cut, and the sixth cut through Idol Bootcamp, got voted from top 34 to top 10 from at home voting, then in the finals was voted to the top 8th place. I even met Mariah Carey, one of my vocal goddesses. It was truly a dream come true, my first taste of fame, and I had a gold record with the show, so many fans, I toured, I made a lot of money for the next 5 years, and I was living a dream. Then in 2005, I hooked up with new management, who would bring me to the Philippines to start a career. And I was excited, I was super hyped about this. I performed on various TV shows nationwide, radio, venues, and even opened for the Pussycat Dolls in Araneta Coliseum. She booked me for tours across the US and then back to Philippines to perform some more. The hope was for me to have a career as a singer in the Philippines, but unfortunately, after three years of not being able to land any contract, she let me go. She said she was also sick and couldn't manage me. I was sad. I was devastated. During my last stay in the Philippines in 2007, I opened for Christina Aguilera, a dream come true, but I knew it was perhaps my last taste of living my dream as a performer. I felt like I had no choice but to give up. I spent a whole month in Tuguegarao, Philippines, where the simplicity of life inspired me to start a fresh page. That's it, I'm moving to Montreal. And upon returning to Toronto in 2009, I moved to Montreal, Canada. French Canada, that is, where I knew nobody. There I became an online jeweler and made some good money. Soon my passions for music came rushing back and I began to write an album. As a bachelor in French Canada, I gained this new energy and soon moved back to Toronto to complete my album. And this album became my first full-length album and my singles played on radio in Toronto and even went viral on YouTube. I even incorporated and made my music and entertainment work an official business. Now it was around this time, around 2010 as well, that I took up ant keeping which soon became a hobby, then a website, antcanada.com, and then a business. The business flourished, and I began selling ant farms worldwide to 22 countries, soon was featured on Animal Planet and Discovery Channel talking about ants, my YouTube ant channel even went viral, I began befriending many entomologists online from all over the world, I contributed to scientific research, and I even wrote ant books which also sold at my store. I was finally making my own money, off ants. The days of me borrowing money for my parents were done. Now, in 2011, with a brand new webcam given to me by my cousin, I made a New Year's resolution that year to upload one video a day. My reasoning was that there were so many celebs being discovered through YouTube, so if I uploaded a video every day, by the end of the year I would have 365 videos and hopefully one of them would go viral. I did music videos, singing videos, vlogs, random vlogs, and one day I did a funny Filipino skit called Filipino Accent Tutorial. In three days, my cell phone sounded like a pinball machine from notifications of people subscribing to me, adding me on Facebook, and the unrealness of the phenomenon known as going viral. Mommy, I said, one of my YouTube videos is going viral. Look, thousands of people all over the world are watching. Michael, she said, go clean your room. <laughs> Fast forward several months later, after many many more videos going viral, after millions and millions of views, after collecting some good cash from advertisement revenue share, two major brand endorsements with Samsung and Nescafe, I found myself being invited back to the Philippines to shoot some commercials for a Pinoy snack brand. Meng Huan URC welcomed me back to the Philippines in late 2011, and it was during these 9 days, after seeing the enormous fan support I had in the Philippines, that I made the decision to attempt a career in the Philippines again, despite several failed attempts in the past. 
This time, not only was I a singer, but I was also now a comedian. So neat! Showbiz! So I ended up moving to the Philippines by 2012, having TV appearances, performing live, doing mall shows, endorsement commercials, you name it, I did it. I was truly living a dream. My fans here in the Philippines and worldwide grew each day, and I still wake up daily thinking this is all one big dream. In 2013, I bought a condo here in the Philippines and continued to live the life of my dreams, the kind of life I dreamed of as a kid, the kind of life I prayed for in high school, the kind of life that made my family and friends proud, including my mom who finally told me she was proud of me this year when she came to visit me as I moved into my new beautiful condo which I bought from my own hard work. Making YouTube videos is now my career and it allows me to be creative in so many art forms, like when I was a kid. I can be kulit when I want, cause I'm a comedian. I get to travel and party like my childhood cartoon hero, Michelangelo. I get to sing and do shows like the Backstreet Boys. Oh yeah, and about the ants, I work with insects today with my ant store, and now with a museum here in the Philippines where I am building them their first ant nest exhibit. I also do talks at schools and universities here, educating them on ants and biology. Oh yeah, and did I mention I love being Filipino and I love the Philippines? And so to all of you at home who can relate to anything in this video, I say, never ever give up on your dreams and passions. I'm not extraordinary, I didn't begin with anything special, I'm no different from you guys, and I also had problems. But remember, if you keep going, you will one day find your place in the world too. It's a long winding road, but soon you will find that you will wake up and find yourself exactly where you wanted to go, and where you should be. I feel that every person is meant for a happy life, they just gotta keep going. And then one day you'll discover that you were on the right path all along. This is your Pinoy boy signing out. Hope you enjoy. Chicken joy. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe to my videos. Mwah. Bye.